You're watching the United Athletic Conference on ESPN. Welcome to the penultimate Saturday of the FCS season. And we got an old fashioned rivalry in Abilene, Texas today. It is senior day for the hometown Wildcats of Abilene Christian, and they welcome in their rivals, the Tarleton Texans. And now welcome inside the broadcast booth, everybody, Zach Carlisle with Joseph Chapa, Connor Mullins coming up as well. Well, this is a great rivalry from back in the day, and it has been renewed over the last couple of seasons. And Zach, this season, both Abilene Christian and Tarleton, high-powering offenses, high-flying defenses, and don't count out their special teams. It's going to be all three phases of football here this afternoon. Yeah, I can't wait to watch this thing. So you talk about Abilene Christian, this kind of roller coaster season. They have a chance at six wins before they go to Texas A&M next week. You know, you kind of see it. It's just all about the fundamentals. Coach Keith Patterson says it all the time. Play complimentary football. That seems to be the recipe for success in their victories this year. Let's see if they can get that done against the Texans. And meanwhile, Tarleton, what a terrific season. Three straight wins. They're finding different ways each week to win. A chance at eight wins this year. And a chance to kind of set the bar even higher coming off of a 59-point victory against Stephen F. Austin. Again, high-powering offense against a Wildcats defense that's aggressive, tough, likes to rush the quarterback. Let's see what happens here this afternoon. Can't wait to watch these two rivals go at it before we kick it off. Let's send it down to the field. The third member of our team, Connor Mullins. The history between these two schools dates all the way back over a century, back to 1920. In the last 10 matchups, though, ACU has taken a 7-3 lead and won five of the last six. Tarleton's coming off a monstrous win last week against SFA, who had gone to Stephenville for 49 years until last week. ACU's coming off a 24-7 win, and both programs have a chance at a UAC co-conference title with wins today and losses from Austin P. UCA in Eastern Kentucky. Guys, back to you. Connor, thank you very much. It is a beautiful afternoon, 60 degrees. No wind to speak of. Today, Abilene Christian won the toss, deferred to the second half. So we'll get this Tarleton offense up first. And this rivalry, here we go. They played a great one, as Connor alluded to last year. It came down to the wire in Stephenville. We expect that again today. Absolutely, and it's a tough bar to kind of match again. 59 points against Stephen F. Austin. Let's see what they can do against a Wildcats defense that now with Keith Patterson has transformed into a formidable defense as recognized on the national scale of the map. Let's see what happens here in this ballgame. Kyle Ramsey will send it away. Glad you're with us, and off we go from Abilene, Texas, and the ball went out of bounds. So it will be... Kick out of bounds. Ball be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. All right, to the 35, it comes with the kick out of bounds. And Victor Gabalas, the Utah Tech transfer, Year one at Tarleton's been a good one. And Gabalas has got the arm strength. He's able to process information in the pocket. He's also a dual threat guy. Zach, it just comes down to taking care of the football. This is something that you learned back in the Pee Wee, right? In the middle school eras and all that. I can hear my PE coach telling me that right now. If he takes care of the football here this afternoon, it's going to be tough for this Wildcats defense. Just a sophomore. He's had stops at Washington State. Didn't get a lot of time there. Played majority of the second half of the year with Utah Tech a year ago. He is the guy at Tarleton. Up and down season, 18 TDs, 11 interceptions. Excited to watch this thing go. The ground game matters a lot for Tarleton. Off they go with Kayvon Britton, and he's able to take it for about five. Here is this offense. They rely heavily on the ground game, but last week a ton of big plays through the air against SFA. And it kind of starts with the ground game, specifically with your inside zone and outside zone run schemes. That's what happened here on that first play. At the 40-yard line, for second and five, Gabalas to the air for the first time to the sideline. It's a jump ball, and is that a catch? It is a catch for Darius Cooper. That thing was between his legs. He's able to grab it for the first down. Well, this is one of those balls, one-on-one. -on -one. You just say, hey, I'm just going to get up and go get it towards the sideline. That's against Patrick Jolly, one of the best cornerbacks in the FCS level. Tough catch to make. He got it done there. 33 yards to the 33-yard line. 
And Gabalas will throw it again. This one a long throw and caught at the boundary by Jaden Smith. A dozen more and a first down as this good opening drive takes it to the 21 yard line. And Tarleton's gonna spread the ball out in three by one sets. You're gonna go into the gun formation here, two by one stack out to the boundary. This is how they get their offense flowing. Drive started at 35 after the kickoff out of bounds. And a minute 20 into the ball game. Gabalas to the air again. Time to do so to the corner and that High pointing the catch is Smith. Right at the one yard line, it's first and goal. So before this, the ACU defense made an audible, checked over to the weak side of the field, and that's just a tough catch to make. I think ACU defended that pretty well out in the zone. That's just a tough catch, beautiful ball there from Cabalas. First and goal. Hand it off, walk it home, what a start. Kayvon Britton for the touchdown. <laughs> In the blink of an eye, Tarleton starts the game with a bang. This is just pure fundamentals here, your inside zone scheme. You want to base your offense off of the zone run game. How do you do that? Three by one sets, out in the gun formation. I mean, Gabalas, this Tarleton offense textbook right there in the first drive of this ball game. The 12th touchdown of the year for Kayvon Britton, the extra point from Adrian Guzman is good, and that didn't take long. Five plays, 88 yards in a minute 46 to get things started for the Texans. Terrific opening drive from Tarleton. And for ACU's defense right now, it's kind of like, all right, we gotta wake up a little bit because Tarleton, again, very textbook offense right here. We see the replay again. A very tough ball against Patrick Jolly. If you're ACU, that's who you want defending that man-to-man -man coverage. You don't want anyone else. You want Patrick Jolly, who leads the league in passes defending and who's up there in the FCS with interceptions. And so, again, one of those things where it's great defense and it's just better offense. As a principle you hear in the game of basketball, same thing rule applies here in football. Just textbook, beautiful offense from Tarleton. Made some tough passes, tough catches. Let's see if ACU can match that. So that play, reason we showed that, that was kind of a 50-50 ball. Yeah. Second play of the game, and it changed the drive completely. A terrific grab from Darius Cooper. And three plays later, touchdown Texans, 7-0. And it's the diversity in your play calling because you start off, again, you're building around the zone run scheme. So then as a defense, you think, okay, they're just going to build off the play action, have the quarterback go under center. But you show in the second play of the game, I'm going to be aggressive. I'm going to throw the 50-50 ball in man coverage. I'm going to challenge the Patrick Jollies of the world. I don't care about his stats and all that. If you're Tarleton, they challenged him. They won. Now let's see what ACU can do here. Adrian Guzman will send it away, does all the kicking duties for the Texans, and this will bounce in the end zone. And out the back it goes for a touchback. So, Maverick McIver, for the first time, takes over with his team down seven, nothing. Another one who's had an up and down season. He's done a good job of taking care of the ball this year. He certainly has, you know, in contrast to Victor Cabalas, but I think with Maverick McIver, he's a quarterback that has, excels in the play action game and also under center. He's got a great offensive line. He's got great weapons around him. If they can kind of build off the ground game and get to his spots, on the field, he'll have a certainly good game in rhythm. And you have been talking about it before we even came on the air that you want to see more of that play action game. I'm a big play action guy, man. We'll see how this thing <laughs> unfolds today for the Wildcats. From the 25, the drive starts with the fake, and Jed Castles in the flat takes it for a quick gain of about four. So Apple Christian opens with the ball for the first time down seven to nothing. They'll give Castles five on the marker. We'll take a peek at the ACU offense in just a little bit. The running back right now is Jordan Vaughn, the sophomore transfer from Wyoming. So that'll be something that shuffles around throughout the course of the game. They will go to Vaughn on the ground. The converted linebacker has a seam down the sideline and into Tarleton territory. First down run to the 34 yard line, 36 yards. It's so important to have an offensive line who's all returning off of this season. Kudos to that offensive line, Jordan Vaughn again, finding the seam and just bursting out. That offensive line for ACU, man, it is real. One of the better ones in the league according 
to Tarleton head coach Todd Witten said that's going to be a challenge today. Abilene Christian, this is McIver who keeps it, and he's got some work to do. He's able to get around the first defender, then he's dragged down from behind by Kyle Taylor. Here's the HCU offense. We've, JV on Sunday is the listed starter running back, and he's out there right now, but they've got all kinds of guys they'll mix in in the backfield. Running back by committee. you got a lot of guys who can be pass catchers out in the backfield. You can put them on wheels and Texas routes, but it's good for their legs, right? It's good for the running back room to kind of get all that diversity, kind of keeps the defense on their toes. Sunday, the Washington transfer, and he will get the carry here on second down with a nice cut. Oh! Oh, and in in the spin cycle to the 20-yard line. That's a terrific 10-yard run. And Abilene Christian on their opening drives in the red zone. It's the relationship between the offensive line and your backfield. The offensive line in the trenches, I'm going to do my job. Running back, you just find the seam. You find the hole. You burst out to speed and go one-on-one -on -one with the backers. That's exactly what happened there, and that's why they got that first and 10. Making the tackle was Quayshawn Washington, the starting <laughs> linebacker for Tarleton, who is a former Abilene Christian Wildcat. Yep from a few years ago in his third season with the Texans. Opening drive for ACU at the 20. McIver flips it out and a lot of room for Hutt Graham. He's got to make a man miss and he cannot. Jalen Carr makes the tackle after a pickup of five. Well, it was a pre-snap motion, and Hutt Graham kind of motions out to the left, comes back. You kind of tell your quarterback in your offense it's man-to-man -man coverage. Hutt Graham finds the flat there, wide open. Great pass from McIver, great catch. Just the fifth grab of the year for Graham, the redshirt freshman transfer from Texas Tech. So ECU takes its time here with second and five. This Tarleton defense has been a game changer this season. McIver slings it out. Vaughn, he's got some room. Got a block from Castles, and he's knocked down inside the five. Casayas Kearns on the stop first in goal ACU. This is an ACU offense that, you know, from before last season, liked to attack north and south. Now they can attack you from east to west. And when you have running backs like a Jordan Vaughn, like a Jimmy on Sunday, like a Jeremiah Dobbins, and you have great run blockers like a Jed Castles out there, and all of those uh, offensive linemen, you can have those opportunities like that here in the red zone. Tarleton defense has forced a ton of turnovers. They lead the UAC in sacks, and they've been terrific on this end of the field. Tylen Williams in motion. They give it to Vaughn. What a start for him. He rumbles in for the touchdown. The answer from Abilene Christian, and Jordan Vaughn has his second TD of the year. Right here again, just like their opponent, textbook football, the offensive line, and Jordan Vaughn, the winners of that drive. ACU did a great job at dissecting the Tarleton defense, and that's why they have an opportunity here to tie it. Kyle Ramsey for the extra point. Remains perfect on the season. That's a seven play, 75 yard drive in three minutes and 42 seconds. Each team's had it, each team scored, seven, seven. Downtown Abilene, Texas. On this second Saturday in November, the second to last week of this regular season in the FCS. Great start for the offenses. 7-7, seven, seven, each team's had it once, and they've scored touchdowns. They've looked great so far. Great start for football fans out there, no matter who you're <laughs> rooting for. I mean, it's great offense from both of these teams trying to figure each other out, their defensive shell, how they're handling different pre-snap motions and pressures and, and, and packages. And Now you can finally say the game's starting now. Well, I mean, not a, if you're a fan of the Big Ten West, I don't know that this is <laughs> this is the game for you, right? Each oh, team yeah. scored a touchdown yeah, on their yeah. first drives of the game. <laughs> so here we go. We're six minutes, five and a half minutes into this thing. Uh, and 7-7, seven, seven. what impressed you? I mean, I thought the passing game for Tarleton, yeah. Cabalas looked great on the opening drive. Yeah, I think for Tarleton, again, being aggressive, it started with that 50-50 ball. Uh, against Patrick Jolly, who's one of the top corners in not only the UAC, but FCS in general. And I think that kind of sets the tone from there. First drive started at the 35 with a kickoff out of bounds. This one almost did the same for Ramsey, but it starts at the 25 for the Texans. 
Cabalas and the gang. And it's off the fake to the air again. Caught on the run across the 40-yard line. Darius Cooper, they're going to give forward progress to the 42. It's a gain of 17. Here's the Abilene Christian defense. That's been really opportunistic at times this year. And uh, they've, they've really shored up some of the things on this side of the ball this season. And again, this young defensive front has gained experience and they're very aggressive in getting to the quarterback, but I think a lot of the pressure now here this afternoon is going to be on the secondary. Again, Anthony Egbo Jr., Patrick Jolly, Elijah Moffett, it's their senior day. Time to show out here against your ACU fans. Much more veteran on the back end than they are up front. It's a young group in the trenches for ECU. From the 42, Gabalas again to the air. He's been terrific at that sideline throw just out of the reach of Jaden Smith with Anthony Egbo Jr. in coverage. Take a look at our impact players when Tarleton has the ball. And again, we're talking about Tarleton, that relationship between the passing and the running game, staying balanced. It starts with those two players there on your screen. Dorian Plumley, Patrick Jolly, again, the pressure is on them to get the job done here in the man coverage against some Tarleton uh, weapons out there on the perimeter. Britton's going to get it just as you talk about him. He scored a touchdown on the opening drive, and he took a shot from Elijah Moffitt after a gain of eight. Second down coming up, and boy, did he take a shot from number seven. And again, these ACU linebackers and even the secondary, see right here, just coming in the safety, coming in, in there with that hard hit. Here the Tarleton offensive line. you got to protect really well. So that was second down in the gain of eight, so third and a deuce right at the 50. They're going to sling it out in motion and dropping it is Britton. ACU is going to run with it, but it's an incomplete pass. And on third down, the first third down of the game for Tarleton, they come up short with the drop. Well, right here in motion out to the left. Had an opportunity right there with a little bit of a wheel route. Might have been able to beat Reese Young there to get the gain of two, but... Again, just in case of the drops, he can't have that. These self-inflicted wounds is going to be kind of one of those things. You look at this game and say, you know what? These are textbook offenses. They know how to figure each other out, both offensively and defensively. It's just going to come down to who makes the most mistakes. Tarleton was 39% on third down for the season coming in. The punt from Adrian Guzman. He's averaging 41 yards a boot for the season, and that's a fair catch by Dax Neese at the 11 yard line it's a 39 yard punt seven minutes into this first quarter and this game at seven seven eight minutes on the clock in this opening quarter abilene christian will have it seven seven the hunger to win is fueled by a chance to compete and the thrill of the action. The cheers from the crowd energize our team and push them on to victory. Whether it's the pregame excitement of tailgating or the postgame euphoria of winning celebrations, United Supermarkets always brings an A-game to your party. From kickoff to tip-off and the final buzzer to the last out, United Supermarkets is proud to feed the competitive spirit. Seven, seven, Tarleton and Abilene Christian. A rivalry that dates back over a hundred years. Renews another chapter 
here on this Saturday afternoon. The ACU offense back out onto the field after their defense made an adjustment and got a stop. And this is an opportunity for ACU again, winning the battle of time of possession. Now you're here starting at your, at your 10. And now again, just get the football, get the chains moving, just slow and steady. ACU to work from the 12-yard line off the fake. It's Hutt Graham, second catch of the quarter. Here he goes, turning the corner and taking it across the 20 out to the 25-yard line. 13 yards and Graham getting involved early. And the coaching staff and the program calls Hutt Graham kind of the Swiss Army knife. He can do a little bit of everything. You can kind of get players like this involved. It kind of just expands your offense a little bit. It makes you unpredictable with this Tarleton's defense. It kind of figures you out. Four catches for the season coming in. He's got a pair of them here in this first quarter. At the 25-yard line. McIver will put it up again. He's got one-on-one. -on -one. It's Blaine Taylor coming back for it incomplete. With Jalen Carr in coverage. And it brings up second and 10. Let's check in down on the sideline with Connor Mullins. Thank you, guys. In their wins this year, AC's only put up five more yards of total offense than their opponents and trailed in time of possession. However, Coach Patterson's team has led 30-3 to in points off of turnovers in those wins. It is 3-0 when they don't turn it over and have only had two turnovers in their five wins with two interceptions from McIver. But he's been efficient in the red zone with 14 of 16 and 10 touchdowns. Guys, back to you. Connor, thank you. And Jeremiah Dobbins gets a carry it's just something that hasn't happened a lot here lately. He had one carry a week ago, just nine times Dobbins has had the ball since September 23rd. And again, goes back to running back by committee. If you're a coaching staff, it's kind of a good problem to have because you have a lot of running backs that kind of offer you different things. But again, Jeremiah Dobbins here in a home game, trying to get him more involved, even in the passing game as well. ECU's done a good job at attacking the flats. The junior out of Lubbock, Texas in the backfield. On third down, ACU to the middle and McCaslin can't hang on to it. Tarleton had a drop on third and two, ACU on third and six. McCaslin can't hang on. And it's very uncharacteristic for Cooper McCaslin here. Did a nice job at, again, man-to-man -man coverage. It's just a, a good five and in, right? A classic slant round, just wasn't able to get the job done here. Again, these are gonna be the difference makers here in this ball game against these two teams that kind of have a similar makeup. Who's gonna make the most mistakes? So the Tarleton defense makes a stop and Grant Nickel will punt it away. And back deep in the 25, Jalen Carr at a fair catch had at the 27 yard line, 43 yard punt. Both teams scored and now back to back punt, 7-7 in the first. The ACU campus on this Saturday afternoon, 7-7. Tarleton and Napoli and Christian and the Texans will take over at the 27-yard line. Gabales will hand it to the left side in some trouble. Dancing through traffic is Kayvon Britton. How did he get eight yards <laughs> out of that? Crazy. Well, great blocking and again, making something out of nothing. And then some of those plays, you're just like, how did that happen? Now second and two, kind of get you going here on the chains. And I tell you, we talked to Todd Witten this week, head coach of the Texans. He said, look, we, we've had a good plan at times. You know, offensive line's been terrific. We've just been really impressive in the run game. He's been really excited about how this ground game has gone this year. Britton breaks it to the outside and he'll cross the 40 with a first down, seven more yards for Britain, it's just all come together in this ground game that they value so much in Stephenville. Yeah, and Britain, you can kind of see here, just looking at him again, running and kind of just pausing a little bit, being a disciplined runner. You're not gonna run at a defender, you're gonna run towards your blocker, towards that seam. He's done a great job at that here thus far. From the 42 yard line. Cabalas back to the air. He's had time to do some work today and over the middle takes the check down 
and he'll get eight out of that underneath to Benjamin Omayabu, a junior transfer from Idaho State, has his first grab to the 50. And again, it just puts the pressure on ACU's defense to respect the running game. Again, stop the run and force Cabalas to kind of drive you down the field, similar like that first drive of the game. Cabalas, six for his first eight today, back to Britain on the ground, and another first down. This team's averaging over 200 yards a game on the ground. And Todd Witten saying that, that opens up everything we want to do on the offensive side. Again, just goes back to the fundamentals. Football 101 offensively. Every offensive coordinator will tell you now in the modernized era with air raid and all that stuff, you've got to have an elite ground game to do anything out here on the gridiron. From the ACU 45, back to Britain. Runs into some traffic that time after a short pickup. ACU on the stop. There is Todd Wynn, head coach of the Texans, 14th year with the program, and he has been terrific. And they have a chance at their eighth win, which will be their most in the FCS era over these last four years. Yeah, as I can see, the growth over with Coach Todd Witten's program has been exciting to see. And again, kind of all starts with all the fundamentals. He's been here a long time. Kabbalas on that screen to the outside. And Amayabu is taken down immediately by Darius Moore, the linebacker. It's a loss on the play, third down coming up. And the thing about ACU's defense is, again, you'll have your consistent guys, but a player like Darius Moore, who's aggressive, who's tough, a great tackler, uh, tackler of the football, again, having him to highlight here tonight, to be a playmaker, is going to be a difference maker for their defense. He beat the block from the left tackle, Malik P. And it's third and nine for the Texans. They stalled right around this spot, a drive ago. Gabalas to the air. ACU brings four to the middle, it's caught. It's Omayabu inside the 25. Dragging tacklers to the 21. They needed nine, they got 23 on third down. And now ACU again, putting the pressure on them. You can kind of see they're still respecting the run game, only sending four. Usually ACU on those type of downs will send five or six. It's a quick snap to get it to Britain. Gets a couple out of that to take it into the red zone. Reese Young was in there, as was Dorian Plumley. Here's the third down conversion. And again, Gabalas does a great job of just being poised in the pocket, processing information, the timing of the route between him and his receiver. Gabalas 106 yards already through the air. Here in this first quarter, he's the reigning WAC offense, uh, UAC rather, offensive player of the week, threw for almost 400 a week ago against Stephen F. Austin. Second and seven, and keeping it, Gabalas with some room. Gets a block and takes it in for the touchdown. Victor Gabalas, a near perfect first quarter. His second rushing TD of the season. Tarleton back in front. And again, again, just beautiful textbook offense from the Tarleton Texans. ACU was kind of manned up right there in a one high look of 4-3 formation. Again, these are things that you don't expect. The Tarleton key to the game, put this ACU defense on their heels, make them be unpredictable, and that's what they've done here so well, and that's why they're up here early. That is the second longest rush of the season for Gabalas, and Guzman tacks on the extra point. That is a nine play, 73 yard touchdown drive. Gabalas doing it with his legs. It also just wears out this Wildcat defense. Again, Gabalas, a dual threat quarterback, not only is able to be smart with the football in the pocket, but he can also do some damage with his legs. Dawson Hearn, the tight end, throwing <laughs> that block out there on the edge yeah. as well. How great does this Texan offense look? If they don't have a drop on third down, that second drive, who knows, they've been able to move it at will here in this first quarter. Yeah, so far, if you're a coach or a player or anything like that working in the program, you look at the film so far of this first quarter, and you're just like, well, if we just don't make those self mistakes, other than that, you've had an excellent offensive game so far. Defensively, again, you're trying to figure out ACU. ACU's trying to throw some different looks out there, get guys like Hunt Graham involved. They're different running backs, but again, all boils down to Maverick McIver. If he can get the job done here against a great defense. 163 yards of offense already for the <laughs> Texans. 
And there's 2.09 to play in this first quarter. Terrific start on the road. Two teams separated by less than 90 miles. Stephenville and Abilene. Guzman, this one's short. And this is gonna skip into the end zone. And out to the 25 yard line, it comes. As we take a look at a coach's spotlight, Keith Patterson, year two at ACU, Todd Witten, we talked about it, the veteran at Tarleton. Just experience all across the board. And not only that, but these are two great men in you know, transforming the lives of the men in your football program. And that's why they buy into the program. It's not only, you know, do you have a good playbook, do you have a good system, you got a good style, that's great and all, but can your players buy into what you're selling? And both, co uh, both coach Keith Patterson and Todd Witten excel at just doing that. Abilene Christian back to work from the 25, down by seven. McIver off the fake, got some room, gonna go for Tylen Williams, a leaping grab. Had to reach out for it and takes it for 14 yards and a first. You can see this ACU offense now preaching tempo. You want to wear out this Texans defense. That's exactly what they're doing here. Great catch by Tyler. ACU goes very quickly, and JV on Sunday will take it for about three. Kyle Taylor was in there. First one to try to make the stop. A minute and a half to go in this first quarter. We had a question of if this turns into a high scoring game, can the ACU offense keep up because it's been very up and down this season? And just kind of like their tempo and, and time and style of play, again, a lot of offenses out there in college football preach the up-tempo, but McIver excels at that. Being under center, the play-action game, if they can do that, I think they will last well in a shootout here with this Tarleton offense. McIver four for his first six. We've got a false start. Ball Matt start. Jones, the referee. 81, offense, five-yard penalty, second out. First penalty since the opening kickoff <laughs> of the game. So Matt Jones talking to us about it. And that puts ACU a little behind the chain, second and 12. Again, just goes back to these are two similar programs. This is kind of the you know the mantra of the game. Comes down to who's going to make the most mistakes. We talked about earlier with Tarleton. They don't have that drop pass on third and two. Again, things will look a little bit differently. Same thing goes here for ACU. From the 37, back to the ground to try to get the false start yardage back with JV on Sunday and third and eight on the way for ECU as we're under 40 seconds to play in this opening quarter. Third down, the money down. I mean, this is where it all happens. And this is kind of, if you're Maverick McIver, you want to separate yourself from the quarterbacks here in the United Athletic Conference. And third and eight, this is how you do it here. This is where the money is being made here, hypothetically in the money down for the terms of football. And so here in an empty look, let's see what McIver can do. ACU's 40% on third down for the season, 0 for 1 today. Sunday comes in. We'll see if Tarleton breaks pressure. They will. They'll bring five. McIver one on one. It is Tristan Golightly for the first down. Abilene Christian picked up the blitz. And Golightly wins on the outside, first to ten. And a clock running. And that will take end us to the, the end of the first quarter. An eventful quarter. Tarleton 14. Abilene Christian 7, UAC Football on ESPN continues after these messages. Welcome back to Abilene, Texas and the start of the second quarter. UAC Football on ESPN, Zach Carlisle with Joseph Chapa, Connor Mullins and the gang. Abilene Christian down 14 to 7 and nice cut on that first down carry to get some yards for JV on Sunday. He'll pick up about three to the 45 yard line. And we saw some fireworks in that first quarter. The offenses were, were moving it up and down the field and ACU trying to match Tarleton up again, moving it into Texan territory. Yeah, Zach, and for ACU, it was great that they converted on that third down. You know, again, it's that five wide look against the man coverage. That's how ACU is gonna make the, uh, make the difference here against the Texans. Second down at the 46 yard line. McIver's off the fake and he's kind of fading away. Go lightly and it's nearly intercepted. Diving effort from Casias Kearns. McIver kind of floating on his back foot on that throw. Incomplete third down coming up. Yeah, you know, it was good footwork off of the bootleg action there, play action wise. But again, it comes down to decision making. Again, you want to throw the ball down the field. You want to be aggressive. You want to show 
off your arm strength. Again, this is the coaching staff that kind of compares McIver's arm to Brett Favre's of the world. And so he wants to show it off, but be disciplined, be smart here with the football. Third and nine it shows. More like third and eight here at the 46. Off the fake, McIver, he's going to take off, and he needs the 38. They're going to mark him a yard shy. McIver picked up some first downs with his legs last week and comes up a yard short. Looks like ACU may go for it here. Yeah, so far no signal from the sideline says otherwise to the special teams. They're ready here to rock and roll and go for it. And again, it shows fourth and two. It's really fourth and a yard. They need the 38-yard line, fourth and one. Will they go for it at the 39? They will. And McIver will keep it. He's got the first, and then he'll slide down at the 37. Back-to-back -back runs for number one, doing it himself. And you think, you know, as an offense, you're just trying to hard count the cadence, trying to get the defense offsides. You win there, and then ACU is just going to call a timeout. You no, know, this ACU play calling, offensive coordinator Ryan Pugh is very aggressive. McIver being involved in different ways in the offense. Love to see it. He got into the positive yardage for the season last week, <laughs> and now he's adding to that here yeah. as McIver off the fake, rolling right, dumps it off. Noah Caldwell, the tight end, he's upended right away by Quayshawn Washington on the stop after the pickup of about four. And again, right here off the bootleg on the play action. Big play action guy myself. It gets these <laughs> rhythm throws here for a guy like McIver. Flag before the quick screen. Ball start, 13, offense, five yard penalty, second up. Wide receiver Blaine Taylor called for the false start. Second and six becomes second and 11. Again, when you're trying to get a rhythm going, the quarterback, uh, you know, of McIver, he's a rhythm thrower. Again, you want these short, quick completions, play action, you want to get involved with these legs. These penalties kind of hinder that rhythm. McIver, six for his first nine through the air for 60 yards. And now second and 11, they'll sling it out. It's Graham, this play's worked a couple of times. Gets around the corner. Oh, made a move. Look at Hunt Graham, <laughs> tight roping the sideline. Where's he out of bounds at? They're gonna mark him out at the 29, so just shy of a first down. Yeah, we saw it in the scoring drive for ACU last quarter. It worked again, the same exact play, same protection, same motion. Works again here against the Tarleton man coverage. Third and two, and it's Vaughn. Ripped off a big run earlier into the red zone. 11 yards on third and two. The wheels are rolling here for ACU here in the red zone. You want to tie it up here. Again, complimentary football, attack the man coverage of the Texans. Both of these teams are pretty man heavy. And again, ACU's wide receivers outside are bigger than the cornerbacks of the Tarleton Texans. They can use that to their, their advantage here in the red zone. From the 18 yard line, back to Vaughn, who scored the touchdown on ACU's opening drive. Dragged down by Brandon Tolvert after a gain of nearly four. How can the Wildcats execute here in the red zone? They've got some targets to go to through the air if they want to. Yeah, and they got a power back in Jordan Vaughn, a former defensive player. So not your traditional running back where it's all just, you know, speed and uh, agility and all that. Of course, Jordan's got that, but he's got the size. He's hard to tackle, so he can use that. McIver, I would say if you're if you're ACU, look for McIver to be involved in the running game more. It was successful in getting here to this point. Why deviate from it here again? Pistol formation, and they'll go right back to Vaughn, and he is going to be tackled right around the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of one came in lane on the stop. The junior transfer from Navarro Junior College and Lamar, a former conference rival of Abilene Christian. He makes the stop. So third and six here at the 14. Be curious if this becomes four down territory at all here in the red zone if they get close to a first down at all. Well, right now, it's looking like an empty look for McIver. They kind of had this formation earlier on that third and eight that they converted with Blaine Taylor. Maybe something similar will happen here right now. Let's see if McIver uses his legs, too. Tarleton may bring the house. 
And I don't Part know if they the got the snap, snap off. Delay a game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. A delay of game on third and six. Big mistake. If you're ACU, you really wanted that. And I'll tell you why. Because that was a zero look, a cover zero look. No one out there covering the perimeter sack. No one covering the end zone. It was all man to man. Tarleton sending the house, like you said, Zach. You want to attack and get your playmakers out to succeed out in the perimeter if you're ACU. Top of your screen now, they bring in Waydell Jones on senior day. The first year senior for ACU on third and 11. McIver, they bring just four. Dancing to the left, keeps it alive, incomplete. Looking for Blaine Taylor, Patrick Jones broke it up and on fourth down, obviously you gotta kick the field goal here. Yeah, and you got the insurance and Cowell Ramsey, that's something that head coach Keith Patterson and his special teams coaches and his group can say, you know what, if we don't convert, we have the insurance and Cowell Ramsey, one of the best, if not the best FCS kicker um, in college football, but again, Field goals down the line, yes, they can accumulate, but they won't win you games. You've got to convert in the red zone if you're ACU against this defense. This will be from 37 yards out for Kyle Ramsey in his first year as a Wildcat, the transfer from Houston. Good snap, good hold. Ramsey, as he's been all year, right down the middle. Stays perfect, he's 13 for 13 on the season, Mr. Automatic for Abilene Christian. Makes it a 14 to 10 game in the second quarter between two long time rivals. Light bringers and courageous leaders who inspire us, game changers and risk takers who never play small creative thinkers, and God seekers who uplift us. You see, the future is ours to create. We hold it in our hearts. We mold it with our hands. We light the fire within. Back in Abilene with Tarleton in front of Abilene Christian, 14 to 10. Texans going for another win. Let's talk more about the Texans. Down to Connor Mullins. Thank you guys. Tarleton has been one of the winningest programs in Texas since 2018 with 45 wins to, to lead the state over programs like UT and a and They have a 72% win percentage as well, which ranks best in the state among D1 and D2 programs. Head coach Todd Witten's program is one of these two teams in Division I and Division II with all five winning seasons since 2018, only joined by Sam Houston. Guys, back to you. Connor, that's a great point. And, and this Tarleton, I don't think it's getting enough recognition about how good Tarleton has been since they even moved up to FC in 2020, four winning seasons, and if they win today, a win would match their longest winning streak since joining the FCS, a chance for their fourth consecutive win. And this one goes out the back of the end zone to the 25. It comes. It's been remarkable to watch this thing unfold in Stephenville. Absolutely, and it kind of gives you kind of that 360 view of not only Todd Witten's football program, but their athletic program as a whole. Been doing some great things across all of their Division I sports. Again, these mid-major programs are growing. The fan bases are buying in the community. It's just fun to see outside of the Power 5 level. 
Billy Gillespie running the show, the men's basketball program. Yep, He's yeah, been around a great long job, time. Great, great job. Great job. He's done. Always schedule great. And it, there's a lot to like over there in Stephenville. Drive starts at the 25 for the Texans, who have had no issue moving the ball up and down the field today. And the drive starts on the ground. And up the middle for the dirty yards, as they call it. you got to be able to get the <laughs> two- and three-yard carry. It's oh, yeah. Caleb Lewis, the Pitt State transfer, who gets the handoff for the Texans' pickup of three. They want part of this kind of three-headed monster. Lewis, first-year transfer from D2 Pitt State, where he ran for over 1,500 yards and 15 TDs a year ago for the Gorillas. And Pittsburgh, Kansas. On the handoff again is Lewis. Trying to break through the arm tackles. Reese Young there to help clean it up with Jerry Lawson as well. And third down on the way. Jerry Lawson, a guy that this ACU, ACU coaching staff regards very highly. Again, young guy, his first year here in the purple and white. Done a great job at kind of leading this defensive line for the Wildcats. If they can get a stop here, that'll be crucial for this team. Third and three. Tarleton one for two on third down so far this afternoon. Two runs to open the drive. And now Gabalas to the air, wide open. It's Lewis. He's got the catch and the move into ACU territory across the 50. It's a gain of 20 for Caleb Lewis. And again, great protection here up front for Gabalas. Attacking the flats for Lewis, making Moffett miss. Great job right there for Lewis. Just kind of being that elusive back. Good pass catching back here for Tarleton. His fifth catch of the season. Now Omaya Boo, and he's knocked down right away. Jolly and Plumley there to take out the screen pass. And that was a long throw from the opposite hash mark to get it out to Omaya Boo, who's been busy in the first half. Now for Tarleton, you can kind of see the tempo is kind of settled down a little bit. You want to use as much clock here left in the second quarter and again, go up and you know give ACU kind of more pressure offensively to be more aggressive down the field. That's a loss of one, so second and 11. Twins at the bottom, it's a handoff. It is Lewis. He's hard to bring down, still going. Caleb Lewis. 21 yards, back-to-back 20-yard -back carries for big number 30. He's an explosive running back. This Tarleton ground game, we say it, been saying it all broadcast long. It's kind of their fundamental. It's their foundation of their success on offense. You're seeing why here. At the 29, why not go back to Lewis? It's been his drive. Still hard to bring down Plumley by the ankles is able to take him down after a gain of five. And he's always fallen off the first tackler. <laughs> yeah, he's a power back, he's strong. And, and again, now all across football, you don't just have that one running back, you're just one dimensional. Dimensional. You got two, you got two, three running backs. Kind of gives your running back room some breathing time, stay energy, stay healthy, and you're seeing that here. Off the fake, Gabalas looking, going deep, and incomplete for Jaden Smith. Patrick Jolly in coverage. Smith wanted a flag, no marker. It's third and five. It takes a lot of guts if you're Victor Gabalas as a quarterback. You recognize this one-on-one -on -one coverage. Not only do you trust your receivers, but again, you're attacking the best defensive back for ACU. Just shows not only are they aggressive, but again, they want to challenge. They want to test and see what this ACU defense is made of. Tarleton saying, Todd Witten telling us, look, I'm excited about what this offense is doing now and in the future. There's no seniors on the offensive side of the football for the Texans. They got five seniors on the defensive side of the ball. Third and five. ACU brings the blitz to the outside, intercepted. It's picked up by Isaiah Kelly. One man to beat and out of bounds. Knocked down by Gabalas. He's thrown some picks this year. This opportunistic ACU defense gets their first INT of the game. Well, Zach, your Tarleton comes down to taking care of the football. ACU, very opportunistic. Isaiah Kelly, first pick. ACU takes over when we come back.
Tarleton in front 14 to 10, but the tide turning a little bit. Big play for the ACU defense. And Isaiah Kelly with his first pick of the year. And Abilene Christian will take over at the Tarleton 38 yard line. See if they capitalize off of the first turnover of the game. Maverick McIver and company, and ACU will start with Jordan Vaughn on the ground and no gain on the play. Let's talk about the interception and send it down to Connor Mullins. Thank you, Zach. Well, you saw Isaiah Kelly get the pick on that last play. He's the SMU transfer, played against SCU a couple years ago, comes here in his first big play as a Wildcat, the big time impact transfer, making the pick off of Gabalas, who has had interception issues these last few weeks. Guys, back to you. Connor, thank you very much. A big play for Kelly as you see him there on that defensive side. And after that run, it'll be third down for the Appling Christian offense. And we saw Keith Patterson at the end of the first quarter, the ACU head coach, come talk to his defense. Yep. They've been getting gashed, and they were getting gashed on that drive, but Kelly makes the big play. Yeah, and kind of all season, kind of the difference maker in kind of these tight contested games is who's going to step up and who's going to make a play. Right there is Isaiah Kelly. Great job right there for the Wildcats. McIver making changes here on third down. He's got five to snap it. Vaughn brought back. It's a blitz coming. McIver to the outside. Go lightly one on one. He caught it. Where are they going to mark him with Jalen Carr in coverage? It is a first down for Go Lightly. Well, McIver saw the blitz coming. That's why he was kind of communicating with the sideline. A little bit of a hold there from four right there to Go Lightly. But again, great catch. JV on Sunday on the ground. Runs right into Blake Smith, the safety, who comes up number 27 to help make that stop. Had friends Josh Griffiths and Quayshawn Washington there as well. And second and seven on the way. That was a massive third down conversion for Go Lightly and company. You figure those big body targets, if they get one-on-one -on -one chances. Yeah, attack it. McIver is not afraid to sling the football again. This is where the Brett Favre comparisons come into play. If you know anything about Favre in his career, he's known to do that. McIver's trying to be similar in that sense here for Abilene Christian. After the gain of a couple at second down at the 25, McIver, plenty of time, all day to throw. It's Williams, cuts up field and takes it inside the 20 yard line. And he is tackled by Casayas Kearns and Bryson Collins, third and two coming up. Staying with tempo here, it's all about the quick tempo. Let's see if they can convert. Jeremiah Dobbins, the running back. They'll give it to him. Dobbins with a convoy left, cuts up and takes it down near the 10. Another third down conversion. For Abilene Christian, this time it is Dobbins. We talked about getting him involved, and this is where you rely on that third down back, and Jeremiah Dobbins, the veteran, the experienced Wildcat here for this ACU football team. Rely on him when you're here on these red zone opportunities. Three minutes to go until halftime. Abilene Christian with a seven and a half minute drive earlier that resulted in the field goal. Now it's first to 10. They can get a first down at the one. Go lightly in motion. McIver off the fake. Time to throw. It runs out. He is dangerous into the end zone for Taylor. And Jalen Carr knocked it away. I thought ACU might have gotten away with a hold at the line of scrimmage as well. No flag down incomplete. Well, McIver here liked seeing. Yeah, there you go on kind of that dual block. Oh, you see it right there. The left guard. Going back to that play, McIver liked go lightly on that post route, saw the safety come in and just kind of didn't know where he was throwing the ball. Again, it's these decisions, these tight contested decisions that McIver's got to make key to separate himself from other quarterbacks. Second and 10 to the air again, late blitz to the end zone. Taylor comes back for it. Did he catch it? Yes, he did. Touchdown, Abilene Christian. Touchdown number seven. Here's the Blaine strategy. One-on-one -on -one out of the outside. Jalen Carr right there. Probably got away with a little bit of a hold similar to another play in the other drive. 
And there you go, one on one. You got the big body receivers, as you alluded to, Zach. And they were successful here in the red zone. Kyle Ramsey for the extra point. It started, oh, it's no good off the upright. It started with an Isaiah Kelly interception. Eight plays later, Blaine Taylor's in the end zone. Abilene Christian back in front. Something that would make a difference. And so getting as much knowledge as possible was important to me. I love the fact that you can dream a new reality and then see it come true with hard work. Today, I know I'm making a difference and a big part of seeing my dream come true was when I got my master's at ACU. Get your undergraduate or graduate degree online at Abilene Christian For years, I trained to be the best linebacker on the field. That drive made me a top performer at the NFL Combine, and I played five seasons in the NFL. Now I'm working toward another dream, building my own business, training athletes to help improve their performance. I want to be the best businessman I can, so I'm getting my MBA at ACU. Get your degree online at acu.edu. Expected to be a beautiful night here in the big country. Abilene Christian takes an interception and turns it into a touchdown, and they've got the lead for the first time here in this first half. Kyle Ramsey missed his first extra point, his first kick at all this season. So the lead just two instead of three, but the Wildcats get the TD and turn it into a touchdown. And again, as a kicker, as a coach, as a fan, it's like, man, I'll take that. I mean, if that's your second miss in your whole career, first one all season, Man, I'll do that. I'll take that. Ramsey will kick it off here with 2.43 to go until halftime. And Ramsey will send it away. And into the end zone it goes for the touchback with 2.43 to go here in this second quarter. The Texans will take over at the 25 yard line. So Gabalas and the gang. At the 25 for the Texans trailing for the first time today. And Gabalas and the gang. Off the fake, gonna sling it to the outside and complete. And second down coming up. As we say, welcome inside the booth, Zach and Joseph here in this first half. Been a well played first half, but Tarleton here in the last few minutes, a chance to go take the lead again. Yeah, you know, it's been a similar style of play between both offenses, really. Just again, Isaiah Kelly, the difference maker here this game, kind of shifting the tide of momentum. That's how you're seeing here this ACU lead here early. So second and 10, two and a half until the break and to the ground go the Texans. Not much room for Kayvon Britton, and now all of a sudden, 
you shift your thinking towards the Abilene Christian defense here with a third and seven, a chance to get off the field and give their offense another chance. Again, kind of going back to that play from Isaiah Kelly, not only does it translate to points on the board for your football team, but also kind of just sparks up defensively. It's like, okay, guys, we got to wake up. This is a great offense that we're playing here. Conference rival, school rival. We got to get the job done. Third and seven. Gabalas fakes to the slant, incomplete for Jaden Smith. Jolly in coverage, and that didn't take long. Less than a minute and a three and out, ACU will get the ball back. And even Dorian Plumley almost got a hand on it, deflecting it towards the, the front side before he was rushing Gabalas, but again, too much of a lead there from Gabalas to his receiver, Patrick Jolly. Can't stress enough the importance that he's been to this Appling Christian football team has been amazing. He's one of the best defensive backs in the entire league, and you're seeing here why. Adrian Guzman will punt it. ACU sends the house, almost gets there. Guzman to the sideline, not a great punt. Where is that going to be marked? It's marked at the... They're still walking to the 49-yard line. ACU up two with the ball. Downtown Abilene, Abilene Christian up by two, and they will start near midfield after just a 23-yard punt. And Abilene Christian on first down, a screen, and Blaine Taylor. Oh, look at that. How did he do that? Nine yards, I thought that was going to be a yard in a cloud of dust. Well, it looked like it right off of here of the jailbreak screen. You're like, okay, it's just one yard, and then just kept going, kept trucking along. Again, this Allen Christian team, they got the fight. You're seeing it here. Kasias Kearns, he went along for the ride. And ACU goes quickly and up the middle with Jordan Vaughn to convert the first down. And all of a sudden, Joseph, Abilene Christian a chance here before halftime to try to go up maybe two scores. This is an ideal scenario for Abilene Christian right now. Tempo, being smart with the football, get those chunk plays from McIver. From the 35, McIver. Plenty of time to throw it. It's Jed Castles, and he's slung down by Patrick Jones, the safety after a Gain of four. Abilene Christian uses their first timeout. 30 Time seconds. ACU with a minute one to go here in the second. And so what kind of led us up to this point here was back-to-back -back drives. Tarleton moving the ball on the first one, and it ends with the interception for Isaiah Kelly. And Abilene Christian turns that into a touchdown to grab the lead. And then Tarleton in 48 seconds goes three and out. And Abilene Christian a chance to extend their lead before the break. This Abilene Christian football team kind of feeds off of the energy, feeds off momentum, rhythm, you know, and feed off of the crowd. And you're seeing it here. You call this timeout, you talk to McIver, you talk to your offense, and you say exactly what you said, Zach. Again, it's an ideal scenario to go up two scores heading into halftime. You've got to capitalize here. It's the difference that you've been wanting to see all season long. Can you get it done? in the last game of, the last home game of your year against, uh, in front of your students and your fans. Let's see if they can get the job done. So you got a Tarleton who's dropped a third down at midfield, yeah. had a chance there on the other side and then a turnover. So just a couple of miscues and sees them down by two. McIver to the air on second down, taking a shot. Taylor coming back for it again. What a catch. Identical to his touchdown grab, sets up first and goal at the six. Well, I think there's a contest going on between Golightly and Taylor, and who can make the most best catches here for ACU? And so far, Blaine Taylor is winning that contest. Again, just attacking one-on-one -on, -one on the outside because you got the size, you got the experience, and you're seeing that recipe for success here. That's why they're here in goal-to-goal -goal territory. Third catch of the half for Blaine Taylor. First and goal, 40 seconds. McIver steps up. Got to make something happen. Takes a head and he's down at the three. Clock running under 25 seconds. And a timeout call by Abilene Christian. Abilene Great Christian uses their second there from McIver, timeout. Trying to make It'll be 30 seconds out of nothing, in but take Please a timeout here. 27 regroup. seconds. 
Recognizing the, the Texans cold. are still in man coverage. You want to attack that. Again, capitalize on this scenario. Tackle made by Quayshawn Washington. Again, the former Wildcat yeah. coming Full back circle. to his old stomping grounds. He's in his third year now with Thank you. Tarleton. And he's the reigning UAC Defensive Player of the Week after his performance last week against Stephen F. Austin. And, and Tarleton's looked terrific each of these last three games. They go on the road and beat Central Arkansas, stopping a two-point try at the end to win that one. Dismantle SFA last week, putting up over 400 yards almost through the air alone. Insane. And that win against the Lumberjacks. But on rivalry Saturday, yeah. Abilene Christian with the two-point lead. It's tight, it's contested. What can ACU do here in front of their home crowd fans? You see it here, all the students in the student section. There you go. That's what happens when you know you're on camera, right? You want to do something funny. You want to get the recognition. You're like, Mom, Dad, I'm on ESPN+. Plus. But what can ACU do, do differently here, right? Like if, if you can capitalize a touchdown here. Again, you got a great kicker in Kyle Ramsey, so you're not worried about that. But touchdowns win you games, field goals don't. Second and goal at the three. McIver's going to keep it. Walks the dog. Touchdown. Easy pick into number one. Rushing TDs in back-to-back -back games. And Abilene Christian trying to go up two scores before halftime. Trying to get Maverick McIver more involved in the running game, using his legs, being that dual-threat quarterback. Great blocking up front there for ACU again. This was the ideal scenario, and they capitalized it there. Good job there for ACU. They get an interception, turn that into a touchdown. They get a three and out, and then they go six plays, 51 yards in a minute and a half. Ramsey, the PAT, and Abilene Christian with a nine-point lead with 24 seconds to go until halftime. Yeah, and right now, if you're Tarleton, heading into the locker room, you're like, okay, it comes down to those self-inflicted wounds, right? The penalties and those bad decisions. You go back, you look at the tape, and you're like, that's why ACU's up here. So again, going back, Victor Cabales taking care of the football. That is gonna be the key heading into the second half. And how about third downs here for ACU? They've converted a couple of big ones in this first yeah. half, four for seven on the money down. And 23 first half points for the Wildcats. And again, a great showing out for not only McIver, but the entire offensive group. And again, the money down and, and you know, being the threat and you know, giving it all to yourself, you know, just kind of getting the job done, walking dog, as you said, Zach, into the end zone. It's like, that's what's gonna separate McIver from other quarterbacks. And not only the FCS, but in the UAC in general, had an up and down season, but you see flashes of the potential McIver has and, you know, the toughness that he shows. ACU has scored 38 points total the last two weeks combined. 23 first half points today. And Ramsey will kick it away and that's another wobbler that's gonna go out of bounds. He has done that twice today. And kick out of bounds. Third time. Ball be placed at the 35 yard line. First down Tarleton. And a, th a third one barely skipped into the corner of the end zone. So, and Ramsey's missed an extra point. Maybe an off day for <laughs> number 51. It'd be a yeah. first of the year. <laughs> yeah, you know, you look at his career, just the season, again, missing the first kick all season long. You look at it and you're like, okay, that we'll take that. You know, he's been dependable. He's been consistent. He's been professional all season long. Try and shake off the dust here. I'm curious if that gives Tarleton a chance here to try to throw the Better ball a couple position. of times here. They've yep. got all three of their timeouts to work with in 24 seconds. And the clock will stop if they get a first down. And on the carry is Kayvon Britton. I'm a little surprised by that play call. It's going to be five yards and no hurry at all for the Texans. Uh, that may take us into the locker room. They don't have to snap it. And they will not. Yep, sidelines already headed over to the locker room. They're ready to go. A massive second quarter for Abilene Christian. They lead at 23 to 14 over Tarleton at the half. The ESPN Halftime Report coming your way next after this.
Back here in Abilene, Texas, it is halftime and ACU in front of Tarleton by nine. Terrific first half of action here at Wildcat Stadium is we say welcome upstairs. Zach Carlisle with Joseph Chapa at a really entertaining first half. Tarleton had that lead going into the second quarter, and it's been all Abilene Christian ever since. Yeah, it just comes down to momentum. That's what Abilene Christian feeds off of. You saw it there from Isaiah Kelly, and they just rolled with it. That's why they're here up in halftime. Take a look at the numbers here in this first half. And again, the, the total yardage might be pretty similar, but that big turnover at the bottom and then Abilene Christian, terrific on third down in the second quarter as well. And back-to-back -back touchdowns, they're up by nine. This is just a great foundational football game for all football fans. Balance, nothing too strongly, nothing one-dimensional. It's just a great football game in general. That's why this rivalry dates back all the way back to the 1920s, and it's still great and juicy here in 2023. You see ACU out rushing Charlton by Almost 40 yards in that first half as well. Got ACU in front by nine. And so this was the first touchdown of the game, the easy walk in for Kayvon Britton. But Abilene Christian responded with a TD of their own on their first drive of the game. This game was 7-7 early on. Yeah, I mean, again, you couldn't find any difference between both styles in kind of those first couple of drives of the game just came down to Tarleton. If you don't have that drop pass on the flat route on the third and two, things might be differently, but AC done a great job at taking advantage of the, their opponent's mistakes. Gabalas then ran one in for the lead, but then Abilene Christian has scored 16 unanswered to Taylor TD, and then Abilene Christian jumps in front by nine at the break. It is ACU 23 and Tarleton 14, and I know we got a halftime feature. We do, up. and it's in honor of senior day with ACU defensive back Anthony Egbo Jr. I sat down with him, talked all about his student athlete experience. Let's listen in to see what he's got to say. Anthony Egbo Jr. Your name holds a lot of weight on this campus, both on and off the football field. Let's just start off with you telling me about your student athlete experience here at Abilene Christian University. I started off as a walk-on in 2018, came here, didn't know really anything about ACU, but got referred to apply here and I did and I just came <laughs> basically on nothing but faith and walked onto the team and it's been probably the most formative time of my life for sure. I've came here as a boy and I'm, I'm gonna be able to leave as a man. So student athlete experience has been everything that I've needed it to be. Think of Anthony Agbo Jr. Can't forget the faith aspect. How do you incorporate the Christian faith and who you are as a football player and who you are as a student here at ACU? I think football is, I think football is the best thing that could have happened to my faith. And I say that because if I claim to, you know, strive to live a life that resembles Christ, a life that's worthy of Christ's calling on my life, then I have to live up to that every day because I have a hundred guys that are watching me. I have a Bible study that I do with my teammates every week, and that to me is more important than, than playing on Saturday because the conversations that we get to have and the community that we build there is, is that's going to last way after I'm done playing. Finally, when your football career is complete, what do you want your legacy to be? I want people to remember me as someone that was authentic, um, that who I said I was is who I was, um, and that's somebody that gave everything that they had. If I would say what I want my legacy to be, it would be that. that people would say that that guy is willing to lay down his life for his friends and, and serve in a way that not everybody's willing to serve. Second half coming up, Abilene Christian in front of Charlton, 23 to 14. Before the second half begins, down to the field at Connor Mullins. Thank you, Zach. Well, it's a homecoming for Quayshawn Washington 
of the Texans. The senior linebacker was the Texas 6A Defensive Player of the Year at Abilene High in 2017, and he made his way to ACU, where he racked up 69 tackles, eight tackles for loss, forced fumble, and four pass breakups in 22 games. Washington knows Abilene all too well and how to win in the big country. Guys, back to you. Connor, thank you. Yeah, there's number zero. He wore 10 a couple of years ago. Now he's wearing zero and is the reigning UAC Defensive Player of the Week. And he's back home where it all began. His college career returning with Tarleton. And uh, his defense is going to get that first test again here in the third quarter, down by nine here as we start the third. A little bit of a full circle moment here for Washington. What a way to end your 2023 season campaign. And again, similar to ACU, Isaiah Kelly stepped up to the plate and was the playmaker and kind of gave ACU momentum. Can a guy like Washington be like that for the Texans? But Graham on the return. Nice little space. He will duck across the 25 yard line. So Abilene Christian's offense, which has scored on each of its last two possessions with Maverick McIver and the gang. McIver 12 out of 17 for 121 yards in that first half. He looked really good. And right now it's just about maintaining, right? Maintaining the control, the poise, you know, again, the cadence of McIver. McIver's had a great great game so far. You talk about Jordan Vaughn, you talk about the offensive line, you talk about your X and your Y out there in the perimeter and Blaine Taylor, Tristan go lightly. Just staying consistent, keeping it up here in the second half. JV on Sunday will begin in the backfield for Raveline Christian. Drive starts at the 27 yard line and Sunday will get the call. Puts his foot in the turf, gets up field, takes it across the 30 before Josh Griffiths knocks him down. So Sunday got five carries in the first half. Vaughn got eight of them. We saw Dobbins with a couple. They're going to rotate running backs here in the second half as well. Again, similar to both teams. You got running back by committee. The deeper running back room goes to the Wildcats, and you're starting to see here is diverse play calling. Similar how they're treating McIver, right? Not just a pocket passer. He's going to get outside of the pocket and do his thing with his legs. Sunday again. Trying to work his way around. Robert Rios cannot do it. Big number 52. The red shirt sophomore. Who's only in playing on the defensive line for his second year. He's in his fourth year with Tarleton. Made the switch to the D line. Nice play in the backfield. Well, four of seven on third down so far here for ACU. Another opportunity here in third and four to kind of set yourself apart if you're McIver, but also this ACU defense. Their success, their drives, their scoring summary has been built upon the third down. The money down here. And here's another shot here to start off the second half. ACU sub, so Tarleton has a chance to sub here on this opening third down of the third quarter. ACU four for seven on this down in the first half. McIver steps up underneath. Tylen Williams got to get to the 37 and he's able to get out to the 40 and a first. Williams third catch of the game is a first down. And the success here for ACU coming on the third down. You love to see it, the great protection up front. There's great route running right there. ACU tried to set up a quick screen to Williams, and it's knocked down by Patrick Jones on that quick throw to bring up second down and 10. So ACU moved quickly. We're at the 39-yard line. This game was 14-7 Tarleton at the end of the first quarter. 16 straight points for Abilene Christian. And now a second down to 10 as they open with the ball here in the third. Hand it off, coming left. And not much, maybe a loss on the play for Jordan Vaughn. And it's Josh Griffiths in the backfield again. The Jackson State transfer brings up third down and long. This is one of those, this is the first scenario for ACU where it's third and long. The longest third down that they had was going back to that catch with Trisha Golali on that third and eight in the second quarter. McIver here in the empty set, five wide. He's been successful here in this package. Can he be consistent? Third and 11. McIver gonna set up a screen. Taylor 
On the outside, long way to go. He got there into Tarleton territory. 13 yards on third and 11 before Quayshawn Washington makes a stop. And that's what's special about this receiver group for ACU. Not only are they big receivers who can win the one-on-one -on -one battles in the red zone, but they've got some great legs, great speed and elusiveness to kind of you know move you forward with the yards after catch. They relied on that speed here from Blaine Taylor. What's on the line? Tarleton a chance to close out. This is their final game of the year. A chance for their eighth win of the season for the first time as an FCS team. Abilene Christian a chance to get the six wins before they go to A&M next week. McIver's going to run it, and he is wrestled down after a gain of four. Brandon Tolvert on the stop. And ACU a chance to compile back-to-back -back seasons of seven wins, and six wins would be their best two-year stretch since moving to FCS a decade ago. Yeah, and again, head coach Keith Patterson and the rest of the coaching staff and the athletic program here at ACU doing a great job of transforming football here in the big country. You're seeing the fruits of that labor here, and if they can continue to stay consistent, the future's bright here in Abilene, Texas. Trista go lightly in motion. Vaughn will carry it. No, flag first. Matt Ball Jones. Start. 55, offense, five-yard penalty, second down. Jones is our referee, Allen Hatton, the left guard, flagged. Second and 11 coming up back to the 50-yard line. Boy, an opening drive statement here for Abilene Christian, a chance to potentially go up three scores. Yeah, and, and now the priority also, you look at the time of possession. Heading into this game, ACU has not been great at winning the time of possession battle, but here, just slow and steady tempo, tempo here at the middle of the field. On the ground, JV on Sunday. Takes it for a yard. Knocked down at the end by Blake Smith out of his safety spot. The red shirt sophomore out of Houston. Third and 10 coming up. ACU's converted a couple of third downs on this opening drive of the period, including a third and 11 a couple of plays ago. And they've done a great job at kind of matching their plays to the coverage of Tarleton. If you're Tarleton right here, you why not send five or six to kind of get McIver off of his rhythm? Ninth play of this drive already. And on third down, they hand it off. And Sunday is close. He's going to get 10 of the 11. To the 40-yard line he goes. And ACU may go for it here on fourth down after that big pickup on third down. Yeah, no sign of telling Grant Nickel to get out there. So. They're ready to go for it, similar to that fourth and one earlier in the ball game. Jeremiah Dobbins is called 21 out there in the backfield in the pistol. Fourth and a yard. And they will go. It's a flag first. Might be an illegal motion. False start, 55 offense, five yard penalty, fourth down. Allen Hatton again flagged for a false start, second time on the drive, and that changes the decision. Now it's a punt. Yeah, again, goes back to the entire totality of this game as the self-inflicted wounds and trying to go back to a play that they've been successful on with Hutton Graham, kind of, you know, the, the motion out there off of the man coverage didn't work there. Now you send off a great FCS kicker in Grant Nichols and try and pin the ball in here and, and get Tarleton in some bad field uh, possessions. I think keep your eye on that false start call. This is a punt, and it is a fair catch had at the... 11-yard line. That is a 34-yard punt. Tarleton will have it for the first time in the third quarter. Down nine. The guys from ACU.
Doctors and nurses are the foundation of healthcare, but it takes people from all different backgrounds, experiences, and education with unique talents and skills to fulfill our mission of providing high quality healthcare, emphasizing excellence and compassion consistent with the healing ministry of Jesus Christ. Join our team of educators, nurses, accountants, pharmacists, environmental service techs, transporters, and more. Be part of something that matters. Be part of the mission. Apply today at HendrickHealth.org slash careers. The Fieldhouse, where the goal is better. Whether it's body composition improvement, athletic performance, mental fortitude, or quality of life, better looks different for everyone. With the help of our qualified staff, we will be there to guide you, to keep you accountable, and to help you recover. Whatever better looks like for you. Come see us at the Field House, 1609 Conwood Street, right off of Treadway. Abilene Christian had to punt on their opening drive of the third quarter, so Tarleton will get it for the first time here, down by nine. Victor Gabalas and the gang. Gabalas, first half, nine out of 15 for 124 yards. Did have a key interception, but they have a chance here to trim into this lead here in this third quarter. Yeah, if you just take care of the football, it goes back to kind of the first couple drives of the game here for Tarleton. Complimentary football, that's the recipe for success for the Texans. Drive starts at the 11. And Tarleton starts on the ground. It's Kayvon Britton with a burst. Accelerates to the 24-yard line, 13 yards on first down. And you start at your 11, and you go back to, you know, the, as you call, you know, a draw play right there for your running back. And again, getting those positive gains. Quickly with Britton. He's got some space now. It's a foot race. Oh, look at the cut inside the 25 yard line. Kayvon Britton sprints down the field for 51 yards. Well, this is what his makeup is. A great blocking up front by the offensive line, just finding the seam, the burst of speed. Again, this is what's throwing ACU off defensively. Mark him at the 26 yard line. Biggest play of the game for the Texans. Trying to make a statement on this opening drive of the third. They bring in Caleb Lewis. Not a bad idea to give Britton a breather after <laughs> ripping one off for 50 yards. Kirby Kohili on the stop, second down coming up. Just goes back to the field possession, right? You get it at the 11 and you kind of dream, well, you know, we can get down there in about three, four plays. That's great. No, but Britton can get the job done. Second and seven after the three yard pickup. Back on the ground again to Caleb Lewis, the Pitt State transfer. Maybe a gain of one third down coming up. Tarleton was two for five on third down in the first half. They have run it four straight plays to start this <laughs> third quarter drive. And now face a third and six. See if ACU blitzes here on third down. It's a fake. Gabalas, one on one, end zone, incomplete. Looking for Jaden Smith. And guess who in coverage? Patrick Jolly for the Wildcats. Leads the league and passes defended. You see it here. Great man to man coverage. Great replay by our ACU TV crew and slowing it down, showing that Patrick Jolly with the face coverage there. I mean, he's as good as it gets. Senior day here for the cornerback transfer from UCLA. Done a great job here, great guy on and off the field. Adrian Guzman, 11 out of 14 for field goals this season. He is kicking a 39 yarder and it is not close. Not even close. He's now three for six from 30 to 39 yards on the season. And a drive comes up empty for the Texans. ACU will get it back. Still lead by nine.
Abilene Christian in front by nine as you peek at the beautiful campus of Abilene Christian University. School that began in 1906. And here at Wildcat Stadium, just to the north of the campus, it's ACU in front by nine here over halfway through this third quarter. And Abilene Christian will start with a handoff to Jordan Vaughn and a good start to the drive for a pickup of about six. So ACU moved it on a fourth down, had to punt after a false start. Tarleton moves down the field. They miss a field goal. Missed opportunities here so far in the third. Again, goes back to the mistakes that you make as a football team. Can't have that. If you want to come back and win this ball game if you're Tarleton. Now if you're ACU, I would say it's even the harder part because you're trying to maintain the score, maintain the lead. Just stick with the ground game, the play action, stay disciplined. Off the fake now. McIver time to throw a dart to the 45-yard line. Blaine Taylor's been busy today. 18 yards. And again, this is why I'm such a big advocate for the play action pass. It's all about being quarterback friendly in the offensive side of the ball. It complements someone like McIver being able to make those quick decisions. When you have a great offensive line like the Wildcats do, it opens up so much in your play sheet. The team leader in receptions has his sixth of the game today. And now, they will send it back to Tristan Golightly. That may have been a lateral. That might go down as a rush for Golightly. It's a pickup of about three and a tackle made by Kasias Kearns. And they'll tend to go lightly on the sideline. It's knocked down out of bounds. So Golightly will Stay off the field after getting tended to by the training staff. Second and seven on the way. So subs for both sides. Tremaine Chisholm comes back in for Tarleton. And now a timeout calls the play clock was expiring. A late their first substitution. Timeout. And so both teams had a chance to do so. And we'll take a timeout on the field. Five minutes left in the third, ACU by nine. The hunger to win is fueled by a chance to compete and the thrill of the action. The cheers from the crowd energize our team and push them on to victory. Whether it's the pregame excitement of tailgating or the post-game euphoria of winning celebrations. United Supermarkets always brings an A-game to your party. From kickoff to tip-off and the final buzzer to the last out, United Supermarkets is proud to feed the competitive spirit. Yeah, welcome home, Wildcats. Moody Coliseum, the longtime home of ACU basketball, is back. Look at that gem. Having fun at Wildcat Stadium. The Abilene Christian cheerleaders getting in on the action. As their Wildcats have this nine point lead. They scored the final 16 points of the second quarter. And now here in this third, this Wildcat offense out near midfield, chance to add to the lead. This has been a well played game. Fun one between these two today. Absolutely. It's been very balanced on both sides of the ball. You've got some, you know, spark plays and, you know, missing field goals and, of course, the interception by Isaiah Kelly. It's been a little bit of everything, so you're not missing out much if you're a football fan. ACU has second down at the 49-yard line. 
Hut Graham in motion. This ball is on the turf, and ACU's going to jump on it. It's Vaughn who was able to get it. looked like a miscommunication of sorts. That timing looked weird on that play. Oh, it bounced off McIver. Bounce off McIver. Jordan Vaughn did a great there, drop there at recovery. <laughs> Again, this is a little bit of a scare there on the sidelines. You have this big lead. You've got the momentum on your side. It's like, all right, guys, stay calm, cool, and collected. Cannot afford the Tarleton Texans to come back in this ball game. If you're ACU, you've got to say that to your team because Tarleton has got the power to come back from behind. Keith Patterson always telling us, he said, I know it's cliche, but we have to end possessions with kicks. I don't even care if they're punts. <laughs> Has to be a kick. It's Jordan Vaughn on the carry. Oh, and this ball's loose again. And it goes again to a wildcat. That was helmet to the ball. Jacob Thielen will jump on it. And Jordan Vaughn got this ball dislodged. He had a head of steam. Wow. And so it'll be fourth down here for Abilene Christian. As we're ticking towards four minutes to go here in this third quarter. I'm not going to lie, that run had a little potential it to did. it there for Vaughn before the fumble. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, you look at it, at the course of this game, the course of the past couple of games, you know, last week against Utah Tech and then come back from Southern Utah, like it's been very uncharacteristic of what just what we saw here for ACU. So again, kind of like you mentioned earlier, what KP always says, end with kicks. There's the punt from Grant Nickel. Nickel will send it and it will take a very nice Abilene Christian hop. Look at that. <laughs> to the four yard line, a 48 yard punt. Here's a QB comparison. Gabales has the pick. Otherwise, both have played pretty well today. Yeah, overall really well. Gabales does a great job at taking shots down the field, being aggressive. He's got the great arm strength to do so. McIver does a great job at letting the game come to him. He does a great job at also just letting Ryan Pugh tailor a system around him, not doing too much, but also taking care of the football. Drive starts at the five, not ideal for Tarleton. And it's on the ground, looking for some space. Not a ton, but a little bit of room for Kayvon Britton. Gets a couple out of that. Second and seven coming up. Tarleton's looking for their first point since the first quarter. Second and seven. Back to Britain. Patient running. Out across the 10. Abilene Christian on defense. Let's talk more about the Wildcats. Down to Connor we go. Thank you, Zach. Well, it's senior day here at Abilene Christian, and one of those seniors is senior defensive back Patrick Jolly, who leads the FCS with four interceptions. He's made it his mission to lock down wide receivers and leads the UAC with over one passes defended per game and six pass breakups. He's a key part of these 15 seniors being celebrated and look for him to continue to make an impact on the field like we saw on that last Texas drive. Guys, back to you. Connor, thanks, and he's out there on a third down. It's a deep shot picked off. Anthony Agbo Jr., the other veteran in the secondary. He's got his first interception in his sixth year with the program. Game changer. And just in time here for senior day, Anthony Egbo Jr., an amazing student athlete there, just does a great job. Terrible ball right there from Gabales. Egbo Jr. right there does a great job of capitalizing and grabbing the interception. ACU right now is going crazy over Egbo Jr. His last home game here in the purple and white. Look at that conversation between him and Coach Keith Patterson. Giving all the thanks upstairs. That's the kind of man Egbo Jr. is. ACU takes over in the red zone at the 19-yard line. And JV on Sunday trying to get a Tylen Williams block. A flag is down as he's going to be knocked down at the 18. I think it's an offside. 
on top of Offside number six, defense, five yard pin, first down. Ty Rawls, the linebacker lined up offside. Second massive interception for Gabalas, Anthony Egbo Jr. What an outstanding career he's had here at Abilene Christian University. Being able to be that veteran leader in and out of the locker room, has represented ACU and the national scale in a lot of different things. Interning with the university president. I mean, he does it all. Now he puts his football team in position to even extend their lead here going into the fourth. From the 14, first and now five, McIver up, spin away, and Taylor has the first down. Little pirouette in the backfield. <laughs> Houdini act, first and 10 coming up. First a goal for ACU. Well, channeling your little inner Patrick Mahomes. For me, I would say that's a little Tony Romo is <laughs> that's right, right there for Maverick McIver. Again, ACU feeds off of energy, feeds off of the crowd, feeds off of each other. You're seeing it here with these big momentum plays. And now you're in what Romo's seat would be. In the booth hey, as well. Got a lot to live up to. To the ground, Sunday ankle tackle. Brandon Tolbert after a pickup of one with a minute to go in the third. And Abilene Christian with a chance here to extend their lead in this third quarter. Tarleton riding high on a three-game winning streak. They've been terrific down to stretch. And the Wildcats off of a 24-7 win last week over Utah Tech. Back-to-back -back home games on their schedule for the first and only time this year. Trying to take advantage. They've been terrific at home. Three and one. Half a minute to go into third. Three to snap it. McIver. Three on the rush. Out to Vaughn. He is down to the two. Patrick Jones with a stop. Vaughn has a rushing touchdown. Knocked away before he had a chance at a receiving TD. Clock may run out on this third quarter. Neither team scored in the third. It's Abilene Christian, 23. And Tarleton, 14. To the fourth we go, UAC football. On ESPN continues after these messages. Tarleton 14, Zach Carlisle with Joseph Chapa and the gang, UAC football on ESPN. And it's third and goal for Abilene Christian to start this fourth quarter at the two yard line. They're gonna hand it off and walking in is Jordan Vaughn. Second time today, Vaughn has a touchdown. ACU extends its lead right away to start the fourth. Have a game, Jordan Vaughn here, the last home game in the 2023 season campaign. ACU checking all the boxes here in three phases of football. That's the character, discipline, and toughness that head coach Keith Patterson preaches to the entire program. You're seeing the benefits of that here on the gridiron. Second time Abilene Christian has had an interception. And the second time they've turned the INT into a touchdown. Kyle Ramsey will try to tack on the extra point. It is good. It's a four play 19 yard drive. Abilene Christian with a 30 to 14 lead as they, we trickle towards the Saturday night hours. ACU on their way on senior day. The hunger to win is fueled by a chance to compete and the thrill of the action. The cheers from the crowd energize our team and push them on to victory. Whether it's the pregame excitement of tailgating or the postgame euphoria of winning celebrations, United Supermarkets always brings an A-game to your party. From kickoff to tip-off and the final buzzer to the last out, United Supermarkets is proud to feed the competitive spirit. Look 
at that gem. Back here in this fourth quarter, Abilene Christian. Go figure, a 16-point lead over Tarleton. 30 to 14, Kyle Ramsey will send it away. He's had a couple out of bounds today, and not this time. Out the back of the end zone. Much better placement out to the 25. It comes. I wouldn't have guessed a 16-point lead for either side in this game with, with the way that this rivalry has been over the years. These things have come down to the wire, and all of a sudden, Tarleton hasn't scored since the first quarter. Down two scores here in the fourth. Yeah, Zach, you look at the series history and the rivalry and the toughness between these two programs. You wouldn't expect it to be a one-sided affair, but now, if you're Tarleton, down here, got a lot of football left to be played here in this ball game. Got to take some deep shots. Quick tempo here offensively. Been able to move it decently well, finishing off drives and then a couple of tough interceptions for Victor Gabales today. Caleb Lewis on the carry runs into a wall of Wildcats. Isaiah Kelly, who has an interception, one of the first men in there on the play. A lot of playmakers for ACU stepping up to the plate. I don't know, maybe it's just the environment, right? It's the last home game of the year. You want to show out in front of your fans. Just kind of gives you that elevated energy and kind of what you need here to dominate out here. Two-yard pickup, second and eight. Gabalas to the air. Late pressure comes to the outside. Caught, and the play made by Dorian Plumley after the catch for Benjamin Omayabu. As we say hello to the gang in the studio, Hutton Harris and the ACU TV crew running the show. Big thanks to that group. Boy, it's been fun for six years with this gang. <laughs> One final time here at the football stadium here in Abilene. And on third and short, very quick handoff. And it should be enough for a first down for Tarleton. Boy, did they need that. Lewis has the first. Yeah, you wouldn't expect you know the ground game. That's what's special about this running attack here for the Texans as, you know, third down, third and long. You don't have to just stick with the pass. You can go with the run. Cavallis to the air on first down, a little high, but coming up to grab it is Omayabu into ACU territory. 19 yards to number 10. Well, good ball placement right here from Cavallis. Great footwork off the three-step drop, getting it up and over the ACU defenders. With tempo, Gabalas down 16 to the middle again. Identical play, Omayabu right down the seam to the 23-yard line, 20 more yards to number 10. And it's the same coverage. And again, Victor Gabalas, great job with the ball placement, getting it up and over the linebackers. He's still in the slot, third time's a charm. No, looking the opposite way. To the end zone, a diving effort for Jaden Smith is incomplete. You wonder who is in coverage? Patrick John. Number 23, <laughs> yeah. have a day. A lot of playmakers out here, Zach, for HCU. Again, it just makes it so unpredictable for the opponent and saying, okay, who individually can we expect a great performance from? It's, it's the whole crew. Second and 10, now with the 23 for Tarleton. The third quarter started for the Texans with a missed field goal, then the interception. and. 
Now at the 23 of the Wildcats, they hand it off. Lewis putting his head down, gaining hard extra yards, takes it into the red zone for five to the 18. And now third down coming up. Yeah, third down here. He had some success in the back-to-back -back plays against that two high zone look against this ACU getting it up and over in the middle of the field. Seems like ACU is lining up in that similar formation here. Tarleton's got to be alert and ready. See if ACU brings pressure, they show it. Third and five. They will. It's a blitz to the middle. Hot route caught. Oh, Mayabu right at the sticks. He's got the first. Needed five, got six, first to 10. Yeah, well, ACU actually goes zero there. No safeties back there. It's all manned up, similar to what Tarleton did earlier. You see here, sending the house, Isaiah Kelly almost getting there to the ball. Would have been a great play. At the 12, on first down, Kabbalah's gonna take off with it. He's got a rushing touchdown today, and he's right at the line of scrimmage. It's a second and 10 coming. And I was wondering on that third down, would it be four down territory down here, down 16, still two scores, but you need a touchdown and a two both times. It may be four down territory. And you look at the clock, there's still a lot of football left to be played. Second and 10, Cabalas. He is hit as he throws, and that one's nearly intercepted. Elijah Moffitt wanted to get in on the INT fun. Tucker Swoboda was the intended target. And you know as a defensive back, you want to replay that one just one more time. Colt Cooper get, did a great job at rushing the quarterback, creating the pressure there. Again, for Gabalas, goes back. You look at the situation that you're in. You can no longer make those type of decisions here. An interception to Isaiah Kelly. An interception to Anthony Echo Jr. What could have been Moffitt? Can't have that here if you're the Texans. Third and ten. They can get a first down at the two-yard line. It's a fake. One-on-one -on -one to the end zone, incomplete. Smith and Jolly again, and it seems like it's been Jolly's day when he's guarding number seven. And, and for Jolly, you look at it mentally, it's like, okay, I know this offense wants to attack me, wants to see if I stand up to what the stats and what the hype says about me, and he's doing just that, right? He's had an incredible game. This secondary for ACU, it's a veteran group. This ACU football team is going to miss them a lot heading into next season, but they've done a great job at defending the pass here against the Texans. 29 yards, which is not automatic for Adrian Guzman. Good snap, good hold, and this one is right down the middle. It's the first points of the second half for Tarleton to cut it to 13. 11 plays, 63 yards, and the 29-yard field goal for Adrian Guzman. 11 minutes to go here in this fourth quarter. Abilene Christian remains up two scores. Back here in Abilene, Texas, Jacob's dream on the campus of ACU. Their Wildcats have a 13-point lead over Tarleton here in this fourth quarter. And a big stop for that Wildcat defense, forcing the Guzman field goal after a 12th play, 63-yard drive. First points of the second half for the Texans. And out the back of the end zone, this goes to the 25-yard line. And I want to go back to that decision to throw it to one-on-one -on -one coverage against Patrick Jolly on that third down. It was a lob to the end zone, and Jolly's been terrific in one-on-one -on -one coverage all day. Yeah, you, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But that play is broke, right? You're throwing it up against the best defensive back in the entire league. And you've had some success against this Wildcats defense in the middle of the field, in the flats. Why not stick with that? Some interesting play calling here for Todd Witten. First down of the 25 for Abilene Christian, up by two scores in the fourth. But Graham in motion. The drive starts with a JV on Sunday carry and tried to squirt away. He does so initially from Cayman Lane. Able to get five yards out of that is Sunday. DCU not afraid to use some clock, slow it down a little bit. 
here in this fourth up 13. Yeah, and so far in the game, they're winning the battle of the time of possession, and now they want to extend it. Ground and pound. Ten and a half to go. 335 total yards of offense for ECU. They're being outgained today, but a couple of big turnovers have turned into touchdowns. On the ground, second down carry, and right at the line of scrimmage. No gain as Robert Rios is in on the stop of Sunday. Third and four coming up. ACU, an incredible seven for 12 today on third down. It's the money down, and that's, again, what separated McIver here in this game, heading in, up and down, not been too successful when he needs to be the most, and he's answered the call here and then some. See if they put it up on third down here. They will, McIver to the air, four-man rush, gets rid of it incomplete. Williams coming across with Washington in coverage, and that's a three and out for the Tarleton defense, exactly what the doctor ordered for the Texans. So Nickel will punt it. Abilene Christian was hoping for another first to try to eat a little more clock, but Tarleton gets the three and out. Grant Nickel to punt it. Gets his right foot into one. It's going to take a hop, and it's going to take a Tarleton bounce across the 30-yard line, and that is a 38-yard boot. ACU up 13. Tarleton gets it when we come back. Maverick McIver looking on as Abilene Christian outscoring Tarleton 7-3 here in the second half. Texans will have it from the 32-yard line. And Victor Gabalis, that's work to the middle. Oh, and pirouetting away. Benjamin Omayabu, it's a foot race. Inside the 10, all the way down to the 1. 67 yards in a blur, Benjamin Omayabu. And the game is not over here in Abilene, Texas. Again, attacking the middle of the field. We talked about that. And a handoff to Kayvon Britton. He's in for the touchdown. Game on. Two plays in the blink of an eye. Tarleton back in it. Again, going back to what worked, right? And that was getting the ball up and over the defenders for the middle of the field. And now you just punch it in towards the end zone with a great running back. As quick as lightning, Guzman for the extra point is good. Omayabu the big play, Britain the touchdown. It's 30 to 24. Game on in Abilene, Texas. Well, in the blink of an eye, Tarleton's right back in this thing at 30 to 24, a lightning quick start. ACU cheerleaders getting in on the action here. Plenty of time, still nine minutes to go. Just under short kickoff. Huck Graham going to return it. He is out across the 20. Tarleton, it took him two plays. The 67-yarder to Benjamin Omayabu and then the touchdown to Kayvon Britton. Again, we talked about earlier, why are they attacking the outside and not the middle? And this is where they have been so successful, attacking the middle linebackers in the middle of the field against ACU because it's been wide open. They're playing middle of the field open. Now here in the end zone, you're just punching in with Britain. It goes back to that zone running scheme. And now it's a one score game. A lot of ball left here, 846 here in the fourth. So pressure now for the first time in a while on for this ACU. ACU offense. 
to get some first downs as they have a six point lead with 8.46 to play. And on first down, Cooper McCaslin will make the catch in the flat on a quick throw from Maverick McIver. First catch of the game for McCaslin. And it's a short pickup of three. Hey, he's been really involved this season in the passing game and, you know, in those jet sweeps and kind of in all of those trickery stuff on offense. Great job of just working hard here for Cooper McCaslin. ACU offense, again, the pressure's on them. Win the battle, the time of possession. Be smart with the football. Tarleton got a three and out, a possession to go, trying to keep that going on the defensive end. And on second down, ACU hands it to the right side, and there's nothing there for Jordan Vaughn. That run defense, Keldrick Williams, one of the first ones there in this six-point game. Hey, coming up next Saturday, November the 18th from College Station, Dabbley Christian and Texas A&M. Next Saturday on the SEC Network Plus. Third and six from the 24. Who would have thought massive third down here? Tarleton shows pressure. They back out, three on the rush. McIver, he's hit from behind. The ball is out. Tarleton's got it. Josh Griffiths made the play. Robert Rios, the recovery, and Tarleton's got their biggest play of the game. First down on defense. Right here, just, you know, your simple step drop. And it's the blind side. That's why protecting the blind side of your quarterback is super important. We see it there. And that's a turnover there. Man, Zach, the tide has shifted. <laughs> a momentum. And it's only 724 left. Oh my goodness. The first takeaway for the Tarleton defense this afternoon. The team that leads the UAC in sacks just got another one from Josh Griffiths. Tarleton down six at the 17 yard line. On the ground, Kayvon Britton. Got a, some daylight for the touchdown, his third of the game. Blink your eyes, Tarleton an extra point away from the lead. In this quarter, with 14.56 left, it was a completely different game. It's only been eight minutes or so le uh, since, and still, <laughs> and now it's a different game. I can't, I can't believe it, Zach. Oh my goodness. Tarleton in front. 31-30. ACU has had two interceptions. They've turned them into touchdowns. Tarleton gets the strip sack, and one play later, the Texans are in front. What a game, goes back to it. This is a tightly contested rivalry, and it came down to kind of this whole big boiling point is, who's gonna make the most mistakes? And we're starting to see it here, and this is what happens with ACU when you make these mistakes. You see it here again, just not being able to block the blind side of McIver, stepping up into the pocket, reading the field. Again, the blind side of your signal caller. That's why you gotta have great protection there up front. And then the touchdown for Britton as well, his third of the day. Yeah, have a day Britton. And again, attacking from the outside. They've had some huge success in the inside zone runs, and then now they're just going outside, and it's, it's been huge for them. He's got 14 TDs now rushing <laughs> this season for the Texans. And Adrian Guzman will kick it away. Oh, how things can change. Short kick, fielded at the 10. Trying to get some room out near the 30 is Denver Holman. And now this offense for Abilene Christian, which hasn't done a lot here really in the second half. They turned a short field into a touchdown and that's been it. They've got it down by one and they're trailing for the first time in a while. Yeah, you kind of go back to the play sheet, you know, when you were up, 
two scores and then some, you go, okay, let's just be conservative, take care of the football. Now you go to the other opposite side of your play sheet, down one. You got to be aggressive here, going nearing the four minute offense. Tarleton's first lead since it was 14 to 7. McIver will put it up on first down. Plenty of time to the outside. Oh, it's tipped and it's nearly intercepted. In and out of the arms of Bryson Collins. In coverage of Cooper McCaslin. My goodness. And this, just here in the quarter, in just a span of eight minutes or so, has been a completely different team for ACU. You're on the sidelines, got to regroup here soon if this trend continues. Right in the breadbasket of Collins, who almost had his first interception as a Tarleton Texan. Second and 10. Off the fake. Time for McIver, time runs out, got to use his legs. He's close to the first down, terrific effort from McIver, needs the 39, they'll mark him out a yard shy, third and one coming up. Well again, in the play action game, trying to get something going towards the sidelines. Great pocket recognition there from McIver. He's had a great day rushing. The coverage has been terrific because he's had some time to throw the ball. And on third down, he doesn't get it. Vaughn is erased. Came in lane. Fourth down. And the Tarleton defense, these last few drives, incredible. ACU is going to punt. Yeah, inside zone there, just getting double teamed there. Your Jake Thielen. Fourth and two after a loss of a yard. It has been all Texans about the last six minutes of game time. Nickel will punt it away. It is going to go over the head and it's going to bounce inside the five. Grant Nickel, terrific punt. Down to at the four. That's a 57 yard punt when they needed it from Grant Nickel the most. And now Tarleton will take over in the shadows of their own goalpost with 5.44 to go. Yeah, you go back to the decision making and not going for it on fourth and two. You've had some success, success going for it on fourth down, but knowing the field position, knowing the time, knowing kind of what's been going on with your offense, you got a guy in Grant Nickel who can pin the ball back there inside their own five. And now let's see this ACU defense can get a stop here against a burning hot Tarleton offense. Yeah, they've had the big plays. That's been huge. They had the big one to Omayabu earlier. First down to the outside. And right on cue, Omayabu. Oh, a burst down the sideline. Some much needed breathing room out to the 20. 15 yards on the screen pass. And Benjamin Omayabu has had himself an afternoon, his 10th catch over 150 yards today. And now first down at the 20. Going to give it to Britton. The workhorse just pushes that pile. Five yards on first down. Getting up from the bottom of it. Coyote Olatale for ACU. Kind of go back to your script here for Tarleton. Just go back to spreading. Spreading the field out, spreading the defenders for ACU. Running game staying balance here in second and medium. Tarleton has found different ways each week to win it. Dominate Moorhead State, hold on at the end to beat Central Arkansas and dominate SFA. Here is Britton, oh look, he plants and comes back the other direction for about three, maybe four. He's gonna come up just a yard short of the marker. Oladale in there again with Reese Young and. Tarleton's going to go quick on third and one. They need the 30-yard line. Just a, a long one for the Texans. They go under center, and it's going to be a sneak, and Gabalas, he is going to get it across the 30, first and 10. Well, one of the first looks here of Gabalas under center, and it can only be one of two things. It's going to be a handoff to one of your fullbacks or a, a draw or just a regular dive up the middle or 
going to be that QB sneak. What do they call it nowadays? That tush push yeah, from right. the Eagles, right? Philadelphia. <laughs> the Texan tush push. The, the brotherly shove, is that what they call that? Yeah. I don't know. In the city of, city of brotherly love. Whatever man. happened to the quarterback sneak? I don't know. <laughs> Here's a handoff. It's Britton again, and he is fighting through tacklers. Brought down by Kenton Will Hoyt after a nice gain of six on first down. It was Abilene Christian who put the game away with first downs a year ago in Stephenville when they closed it out to win 28 to 23. Harleton now with a one point lead and they try to stack some first downs together to get a road win. Yeah, an opportunity to give your rival in Abilene Christian a taste of their own medicine. If you're ACU right here, you need a big play. It's time for a playmaker to step up. Down by 16. It was 30 to six, uh, 30 to 14 ACU. 17 unanswered points. Another handoff, and Britain is close to the marker. Depends on the spot. They'll give him the first down at the 41-yard line. First and 10, Tarleton. Approaching two and a half to go. And the Texans will. Gladly use clock here. They can tick it down near 210 before the next snap. Abilene Christian with two timeouts remaining. Drive began with over five minutes to play. Here is another handoff. Coming left across the 50, another first down. What a run, Kayvon Britton. What a player he's been for Tarleton today. What an outstanding season thus far, an outstanding game. Just being that Abilene workhorse Christian back their here second for the Texans. Timeout. 22 Please carries, 164 yards for Britton, and three touchdowns today. So a timeout called with a minute 53. Well, they put 157 now on the clock with Tarleton in front by a point at 31 to 30. Welcome upstairs, Zach Carlisle and Joseph Chapa. How this game has turned in the blink of an eye. Abilene Christian had a 16 point lead not very long ago, 17 unanswered for Tarleton. It's crazy how fast the time changes in football. At the start of the fourth quarter, ACU was running away with it as a one sided affair. And then now, here you go, Tarleton's running away with it. It's crazy the rivalry between these two teams. You can feel the tension and the toughness. Well, let's see what ACU can do here to try and get a stop, avoid a Tarleton victory here at the last home game of the season. But Tarleton, man, tough class program. They're doing all the right things here offensively to take care of the football and seal this win. It's one of the great transitions that we've seen around the country from D2 to FCS. It's really hard to do, and they've had a winning season every year at the FCS slate. Another powerful run up the middle. Timeout, Abilene Christian. They'll call their final. Abilene Christian uses their third and final timeout. And it's a gain of three, so second and seven. And you figure if you're ACU, you have to sell out to stop the run, right? I mean, it, it feels like you know it's coming and you just can't slow it down for the Texans. Yeah, you got a run commit. And, you, you know, also thinking about the timeout situation, the time on the clock. Again, I mean, and that's the thing about this Tarleton team is it goes back to what Todd Witten said, Zach, is the ground game. And when you're in situations like this, when you're just trying to beat the clock and just – Eat it all up. If you have an elite ground game, this is where it comes into play. And for this ACU defense, it was just crazy what's happened for them in just a matter of minutes, in just a span of a quarter, how fast this game has changed. And this has just been overall, no matter what happens, has been a beautiful football game. A little bit of everything here. So Tarleton goes on the long drive for the field goal. Yeah. But then after that, it was the one big play of 67 yards. And then after that, they had the turnover and they turned it into the touchdown. So the defense hasn't been on the field a ton, yeah. but they've still given up enough Big for this to be a, of importance. So it's second and seven with a minute 52. 
No timeouts for ACU, so it's a run up the middle, and breaking tackles is Britton to try to ice it to the 33-yard line. Tarleton with a comeback for the ages. Spoiling senior day here in Abilene, Texas. Again, just textbook here. Dive up the middle. Tarleton, their offensive line, kudos to you. Doing a great job at just finding holes for your running back in the backfield. And what a game, Zach. What a game. 247 yards on the ground for the Texans. 258 through the air, 505 yards of offense, and a remarkable 17-point fourth quarter. As Victor Gabales takes a knee, this drive started with over five minutes to go in the game, and the Texans are gonna end with kneel downs. What a game, and I think this has been a thrilling game for you, my man. <laughs> Last one over this past six years. I do wanna say on behalf of us and the ACU TV crew, over the last six years, the countless of broadcasts that you've been a part of, the professionalism, the kindness, the respect, everything that you've done here for this university, the program for us, for me as a student, we can't thank you enough. We're gonna miss you, my man. I know we'll stay in touch, but uh, you've been a crucial part at the development of ACU TV, and no matter where ACU TV goes in the future, you're a pioneer, you're a legend. I think I should call someone to kind of build a statue or something. I mean, <laughs> maybe a jersey. Can we get that, Hutton? A great thank you to Hutton Harris, Chris Jared, Kerry Johnson, the whole crew, Emily Schaefer. It's been an outstanding ACU TV year for our broadcast. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed us doing that. Well, I appreciate that, Joseph. It is a final and what a come from behind win. Tarleton scores the final 17 points of the game to win it 31 to 30 over Abilene Christian today. That was as tremendous of a game as you will see, and it turned in the blink of an eye. How incredible, as we welcome you upstairs, Zach and Joseph, how incredible was that turnaround for Tarleton there in the fourth quarter? I mean, that's why they are such a unique and such a great program, because they have that in their DNA. This is where it shows out. Tarleton, it's just an amazing football program. You're seeing it here this afternoon. Take a look at the numbers. The final numbers, 500 yards of offense, almost as balanced as it gets. 23 first downs. I mean, just incredible. And the turnovers were huge there at the end. ACU converted both of those into touchdowns, and Tarleton converted theirs into a touchdown as well. And uh, it, it was all Tarleton there on that final fourth quarter as they went at 31 to 30. Before we get out of here, I cannot say enough about this group that we've had the pleasure to work with over the course of six years. Hutton Harris has done an incredible job building up that ACU TV program. This is a student run production that I've had the pleasure to sit in this seat for the last six years. This group has been incredible to watch students like Joseph and the gang grow up and, and do this in front of our eyes. I mean, it's just, it's been the blessing of a lifetime. Thank you for tuning in each and every Saturday uh, over the course of these last 66 games uh, over the last six years that we've been able to do. It has been the pleasure of a lifetime and I just can't say enough uh, about what a pleasure it's been to sit in this seat. It's, it's the final time for me up here in this broadcast booth uh, as we say goodbye to Abilene, Texas, but thank you so much to everyone who's been a part of this journey. One final time, this has been a presentation of the United Athletic Conference on ESPN, all games airing on the ESPN networks or streaming live and archive on the ESPN app. Till next time, Zach Carlisle, Joseph Chapa, Connor Mullins, the whole crew led by Hutton Harris and Chris Jarrett saying so long, take care, good night. Thank you so much for being my friend. Good night from Abilene, Texas.